All right, here I am for another, I'm on the road. I am in uh, Eagle Point, Oregon, and I'm here with a statue along with its creator. So this is another interview. Welcome. This is Jay Jarvie. Another one of those Jarvies. Another Jarvie. So uh, in the series of, of interviews with artists, we've already gotten two Jarvies. Although I don't particularly call myself an artist, they're usually strange and demented people. So. What? <laughs> yes, I guess so. Um, Jay is my brother. So here we are. We are at his house, and we're going to talk a little bit about his uh, background in art, creating. This is called creating. Yes, that's what I am, a creator. Creator. And um, a little bit about his newest project, which you are seeing now. But I kind of like doing the background of the artists. So we're going to get learn a little bit more about uh, how you got to this point, right? Sure. Let's go see some things that I've done in the past. And then we can come back and talk about this statue here, which is known as Providence Lifts All. Okay, great. All right, to see, uh, to journey back to some of his past work, we've come to his computer here. And we're going to view some of what you've done in the past. Yeah, since we've grown up in a, an artistic line of people in our family, my father and his brothers, they were all did something in the art world. I kind of tended to lean towards the mechanical and the illustrative side of art rather than the fine art side. Although that's a little bit of a lie, I think the fine artists are the strange ones. I did spend a lot of time when the foundry, the family had a foundry to do the bronze art casting yeah. and some of that. But I typically, to make money in art, I moved towards the mechanical side and did things that were prototype development, model making, those type of things in my life. And so Scotty wanted to see some of the stuff, and I just don't have a lot of stuff on my wall, as so to say, as paintings and those kind of things. I make things when I need something done, or when somebody else needs something done, I make it for them. So the only thing we could do is figure is to pull up some stuff that I had on the computer that I could show you in a couple of illustrations. So nice. we're just going to take you that way. Hopefully you can see through some of the resolution problems of translating to this video, but... This is a, a coin I'm creating to go along with the monument outside that you will hear a little bit more about later on. And my wife was in here, so let's go. Okay. This is the back side of the coin. And this is symbolic, and we'll talk about that when we go back to the monument. This is a, a digital art painting I did for a cover of a book I wrote. You wrote a book? What was it about? The book is about... The possibility of our economy and society having an economic and social collapse and what would that would create and how it would actually benefit us. This is a little bit small here, but it's actually a sculpture I did for one of my father's doors. If you've seen Scotty's previous videos, the interview with my father, there's a couple of those pictures in that also, the door panels that I helped him sculpture. This is a rendering of a car. We... Have, I have a background in, in automotive design and had worked on trying to build my own car and go into production like DeLorean or Tucker. In fact, my youngest son is getting close to being able to drive, so we're going to build a car. And this is a model that was cast in plaster that we can cut up and use to create the templates to build a full-size version. All right. And so there you go. That's some of the things... And now we'll just go through a couple of illustrations. We'll so start. what formal training would you say that you have? I went to one year of school and to, thought I would break into automotive design and then decided to not let school interfere with my education. Okay. <laughs> it's kind of like me. I uh, There's some similarities. I went to school and studied languages, so I wasn't even uh, pursuing uh, photography. And it just kind of happened and I had to quit school so that I could actually learn. These first illustrations are some that I did. I built a truck back in the heyday when the Hummer was the up-and-coming thing. Built the truck and then sold plans for it so that you could build your own off of almost any frame of any vehicle. And this was another version of so it. So this was a working, functioning truck. Yeah, and I was hoping to pull up some pictures of that kind of thing, but I don't have them immediately available. So um, This is what the, the truck was that we built. It looked like this. This is the next version. 
And I get a build so that Scotty and I can travel around and be able to sleep in our cars more comfortably yeah, than, than we do now. My previous video where I showed my Venza. This is a logo, a logo created for someone. And these are some illustrations for some manuals and those kind of things. We'll just run through some of those quick. So your art here is a little more functional. And then, of course, we could pull up a bunch of drawings I've done. I spent about seven years doing architectural design before the economy crashed in that industry and left me to building monuments. <laughs> yes. All right, so let's... We can go back to there. All right, let's do it. That. All right, and now we're back with... Uh, you said Providence Lifts All is the official title. Right, that's the name of this sculpture. And the plan is, is to enlarge this to make it 140 foot tall, which will be just slightly shorter than the Statue of Liberty. Okay, and, and right now going it's... going to be a sister to the Statue of Liberty. Okay. Hopefully built here somewhere on the West Coast. Now, I mentioned that almost with all my artwork, everything's created to accomplish an end rather than just to do it for the art's sake. And it's the same with this. I needed a symbol, something to represent another project I have going. And that project called the Vividus Project is to promote the idea that we need to advance as a civilization and that we just keep going through cycles. We get better, but then we either come to a collapse that I talked about before or something that just drags us back down and keeps slowing us to a point. But I have this feeling that we are kind of in a next step, that quantum leap that a lot of people like to call it, that we will one day make that advance and move into a little more utopian society. And so I wrote a book about this collapse that was might coming up and how that could help, but I just felt the book was uh, just a little too negative and just explaining the problems rather than doing anything about it. And so I started the Vividus Project to create a couple of things that would be able to advance the whole idea and get the ideology in front of people. But I don't have enough of a platform to be able to step out and have the media expose me and cover my ideas. So I said I needed some kind of a symbol. And the Statue of Liberty has always been that kind of a symbol that has a lot of iconic recognition. But I remember the quote by Viktor Frankl, the late Holocaust survivor in Auschwitz from Auschwitz, and he wrote a book called Man's Search for Meaning. And in that, he mentioned that there should be a statue on the West Coast called the Statue of Responsibility. And after thinking about that quote, that kind of spurred me on, and I thought, I should just do this. So I ordered some clay and sculptured Providence here. Okay. So now the idea is, and we've been just starting to get going and get the media interested in knowing about the monument being built. The plan is to find some property build a 30 acres or so, put a park, and have Providence right there in the middle of it so people can come and see it, become a tourist destination. And then hopefully they'll look at it and say, what does all the symbolism mean? Why does she have a sword in her hand? Why she got scrolls in her hand? She has a shield on her back. I can spin her around. That's right, I can move. We saw that in the coin. Uh -huh. It's very symbolic of the, the statement of Providence. I'll, I'll just go through some of those things. On her shield, there's the words Deus, Sui, and Elise. This is God on the top, self, and others. And there's a star starburst, and the shield represents truth, or truth is bursting forth, the light bursting forth in there. And this little symbol here is just the connection between those three words. So in Providence, or our ability to help another, other people, basically, is if we work through God, then that is done through him rather than gaining glory for ourselves. Uh -huh. Other symbolism on here, of course, are scrolls. They represent truth and wizard, knowledge and wisdom. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Back to the shield. Um, she's wearing armor underneath her robes, represents preparedness. Her robes blowing in the wind represents that she has endurance or surviving there and she has under her foot she's standing on a serpent which represents evil or overcoming evil and then of course the most prominent is the sword in her hand uh -huh. which is traditionally depicts divine authority or having authority but using that divinely as god would okay so the next step 
I need to redo her. This is what would, you know, in art would be called a study. Uh -huh. And the next step is I'm going to build a life scale version. So she'll be six foot tall and then eight and a half with the sword. And from that one, we'll scan this sculpture and be able to take that scan data and enlarge it digitally. Those digital images will be broken down into five foot panels, basically. And then a CNC machine will cut the wax. That wax will be melted out in the lost wax process. And those panels be cast in bronze reassembled in rings around a steel framework. So very similar to the way the Statue of Liberty was made. The Statue of Liberty was copper plates, you know, hammered on a wood frame in repose. And this will be actually lost wax cast bronze. All right. So where can they go to find more information besides this video, which obviously is a wealth of information, which I always bring to everyone that I interview? Well, you go to statueofprovidence.org. We'll take you and tell you all about the monument. There's some links in there that go back to my personal website and other information from the site. Okay. How can, uh, if anyone wants to help, what are the ways? Right now, we're setting up a store so that you can go and buy artworks from me that are commemorative things that match up and, and tie directly to the monument. And there's going to be some other artists' artwork in there also. We're going to fund this thing by purchase of artwork rather than asking for straight out donations. And that store is not set up completely right now. It'll happen at the first of the year. If Scotty posts this right close to then, you'll be able to go into statueofprovidence.org and uh -huh. find the store listed there. Otherwise, if you're interested, we'd love to keep in touch with you. And you just go in there and sign up and subscribe to the email list also. And we'll just keep you up to date on what's going on. And, you know, one way is that they could share the video. Because yeah. then they would... The uh, best thing to do, share the, message. the video. That's what works. A that helps people, me too. Yay. <laughs> it's interesting in the media, a lot of people ask me, so how do you think you're going to be able to accomplish this thing? And when the Statue of Liberty was built, it took them a long time just to raise the money to build the pedestal when they knew the monument was coming from France. But today, we have one of the most powerful tools ever created by man, and that is the internet. Mm -hmm. It is just purely a matter of getting the word out. The, the pedestal for Statue of Liberty was raised with donations of less than 90 cents was the average. And they raised over $250,000 with donations of less than 90 cents. And so when you tie the power of the internet today, that's the way it's going to work for Providence. Enough people know about it and get interested and understand the ideology and the symbolism behind it. I think we'll be able to do it. If people would like to learn kind of like more about this concept of Providence that you talked about, where, what books would you send them to? What spurred your imagination to thinking about the concept of Providence? Um, the only thing I think of is things that write to my mind that I'm familiar with right off. And there's some really interesting books of history books by Chris and Ted Stewart that talk about how the set of tipping points that changed the world and mm -hmm. how things that have occurred in our history that build up to us progressing in the world and, and things occurring, maybe God's hand in providence, that divine providence. And they also have another book called The Seven Points that saved America. That's okay. the same thing that talks about the things that happened in America to get us to this point to be able to move ahead. All right. Well, it was uh, fun learning about where you came from as an artist and your uh, most recent project. Well, we're glad you stopped by. Yeah. Hope you have a good time on the rest of your trip. Yeah. And uh, feel free to uh, go to his website and subscribe here. I'll be bringing you a lot more uh, interviews with other artists, a lot of photographers, but as you can see, some not photographers. So that's that from uh, near Medford, Oregon, here with Jay Jarvie. See you again. Thanks.